Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have another helmet video for you, uh, but this is going to be more about the cover on the helmet than the actual helmet itself. Now you guys know, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, that I really like helmets that usually offer more coverage, uh, have a little bit of a bill, and have a suspension, which means I'm a big fan of the Pazgat, naturally. Um, and this is a Pazgat helmet right here. But this is actually probably one of the rarer versions of, of the Pazgat, and we'll get into that here too um, when we actually discuss the shell, but this video is more because of the cover. Uh, I have Pazgats re reviewed on my, my channel before, um, but this helmet, I don't know if you've, uh, if you're already uh, keen on what's, what's going on here, you'll notice that the helmet cover is ripstop instead of twill, which is a little weird. You'll also notice that there isn't any foliage slit slits in it. So, which is another weird problem. So, that is a, a huge, huge misconception there. And uh, also you see there, there's a seam here. You shouldn't see a seam on the uh, top of the normal Pazgat helmet cover. And just for comparison, Here's a normal Pazgat with the normal cover. All right, as you can see, it is a twill type fabric. As you can see, the kind of jean type stripes in there it has foliage cuts and, and the seams are on the inside. So again, we have ripstop, seams are on the outside. There's no foliage loops on it. So what could this helmet cover be then? Well, to you collectors out there, this is actually the rarest Pazgat cover you can possibly own. Um, I got it brand new here a couple days ago. Not a couple days ago, but like a week ago about. So, uh, And this is the rarest Pazgat cover they ever made. So, uh, As far as American Pazgat cover goes. There's some out there that are pretty rare from other countries. Uh, but as far as American Pazgat covers go, this is an incredibly, incredibly rare helmet cover. So we'll move the helmet over here. Now one thing you're going to notice when I set the cover down, it free stands, which is a little weird. Even when you kind of tap on it, it still pretty much free stands. Well that's because this is the countermine helmet cover. So it's actually two layers of fabric sandwiched around a Kevlar bowl. And you can see how there's uh, more fabric on the inside. You can see the tag there. Uh, countermine ballistic helmet cover, this is for size large, because that's what uh, size pads get I wear. It's lot number 001, so it was made in 2002 and it's a generation 5. So this is a 3A helmet cover that's designed to go over the already 3A Pazgat to give it more protection in a blast. Uh, here's the cleaning instructions on it. So this is the rarest Pazgat cover you could own uh, from America. Uh, fun fact about these helmets too, all right, you'll notice on them, uh, compared to a standard Pazgat cover, that the loops are a lot longer, all right, for attachment, and that's because the loops are supposed to wrap around the suspension once fully before you reconnect them to make sure the helmet cover is extra secure to the helmet, so that way it can't jostle around during a blast or anything, which is going to negate its protective abilities. Um, this helmet is also uh, jumpable. Uh, it has the uh, straps uh, spots back there for the uh, airborne, the early airborne retention system, just the upgrade, not the purpose-built airborne chin strap. So the ones where you got to get the extra screw and has the two nylon straps and the Velcro that wrap around the standard Pazgat chin strap. It has the cuts for the standard Pazgat chin strap to come through and everything like that. And I got it with this this helmet right here, which is actually uh, probably my favorite Pazgat manufacturer because they manufactured everything to a way, way, way high standard, way higher than the military actually required, and uh, they're actually pretty rare. Um, so, well, I shouldn't say rare, but they're harder to find. And um, you can see that the Kevlar weave is a very, very uh, meticulously layered and everything is very, very even on this helmet. It has the tag still in it with all of the um, the guy who actually did the molding. It has his number on it. It has the, the painter. It has the uh, inspector and everyone's little stamp and mark on there saying it was approved. Um, it didn't come with the sweatband. This is just a used sweatband I threw in there. Um, 
but it's made by the Devil's Lake Sioux Composite Company in North Dakota. So they made the nicest Pazgat. I am a huge fan of the Pazgat, super nice. The rims on them never have any problems. They're always a very, very high quality rubber. You can't even really scratch them. They're that nice. They're always seamed very well, um, unlike some other Pazgat companies. And uh, their sizing is always very, very uh, uniform. They never have any uh, problems with the rims coming off. The, there's no like excess glue really anywhere. Um, they're just very, very, very well built. Uh, helmets. This is a size um, L1. I don't know how many of the uh, molds that they had. I think they might have all just been size L1 uh, because each company got a certain amount of molds and that's what the, si uh, the sizes mean. Uh, you'll see uh, you know, extra small for, for extra small. You'll see uh, small for an S for small, uh, M for medium, and L for large, and XL for extra large. And the number corresponding next to it is the mold that they used so there was multiple size large molds that were a standard and there was multiple size medium molds that were a standard this is an l1 mold so this is the first type of mold in size large so um i don't know what the 26 means over here i haven't ever seen this on another pasgat uh, but this is a probably one of my favorite pasgats in my collection um, i really really like it uh, it's a very, very uh, nice Pazgat. When I weighed it compared to my standard Gentex Pazgat, this isn't a lightweight Pazgat, but it's actually a little bit lighter than the standard Pazgat. So, um, just to go to show with the quality that they used in it. So, um, I, I own a couple Devil's Lake Sioux Pazgats, and I'm hoping to get another one here. Uh, they're very, very nice. They're my favorite manufacturer of the Pazgat. Uh, little bit more so than Gentex, the really, really common ones of all the really, really common manufacturers like uh, Unicor and uh, Gentex and stuff like that. I'd rather take a Gentex one. Um, but so uh, out of all the manufacturers of Pazgat, the Devil's Lake Sioux Company made the nicest Pazgat in my opinion. So um, hopefully uh, we'll compare it up here next to this Pazgat. This is a standard Unicor Pazgat and I didn't take the cover off, but um, it has a much more squared off rubber rim. The rubber rim is not as nice. It's not as, uh, it's a little bit greener in color than the Devil's Lake Sioux one. The Devil's Lake Sioux one's a much more olive drab. But this one, this Pazgat has a very, very uh, strange history to it. Because as you can see, it has the lightweight helmet retention system in it. And that's because this helmet was one of the fill gap measures uh, after the Marines during the first um, Iraq War ran out of lightweight helmets. They didn't have enough lightweight helmets to issue everybody, so they had to start modifying old Pazgats. And this one made it about halfway through uh, the modification because it has the suspension of a lightweight helmet, the suspension and sweatband, but it doesn't have the four-point chin strap. It has the same, the original Pazgat two-point chin strap on it. So it has a pretty uh, storied history. As you can see, this one there is a unicorn. Um, it does have a little bit of extra glue runs on it. As you can see, it wasn't joined very well in the back. Um, but it's still a very, very good helmet. Um, the layering isn't as even or as nice as in the Devil's Lake Sioux one. And this one's, this one's a, a bit heavier, even without the cover, than this Pazgat, than the Devil's Lake Sioux one. So, um, just uh, goes to show you, what you, you get what you pay for and uh, everything like that. And when you do your homework, you can get a nicer product. So, hopefully you guys like this video and uh, you're interested in some of the... Uh, extra little stuff I have. Um, this one I'm going to turn into probably just the rarest Pazgat you could probably find. I've got the three-point chin strap here and uh, the parachutist nape trapezoid. I've got the rarest helmet cover for it. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, probably the a culmination of all the rare stuff you could get for the Pazgat just to add, have it in my collection just to put on display. Just be like, this is the rarest Pazgat itself, the rarest cover, the rarest chin strap, you know, the rarest configuration, everything like that all in one. So um, if you guys want to see that when it's done, uh, leave a comment and I'll, I'll do a video on that one when I get it all done and stuff like that too. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. And uh, if you're interested in this stuff, uh, please subscribe. We're getting up there towards 200. I'll do another giveaway at 200. Um, thank you so much for watching you guys and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.